Beep, beep. What is up, ninjas? My name is Sam World. In today's video, I wanted to use a song I've currently been working on to go over some of the mistakes that I made as I was creating it. Now, these are going to be mixing mistakes, and maybe I'll make a video in the future on arrangement and composition mistakes that I made in it. But today, I wanted to target those mixing mistakes and talk a little bit about why they were happening and how I fixed them. My goal with this video is that you would watch it and maybe you can kind of relate or you did the same exact thing as I did and you have a solution to that problem. For this example, I'm going to be using a track that I've been working on on live streams, as some of you guys know. I'm all about that nature stuff, so I love to make music that resembles what I'm about, which is going outdoors, camping, off-roading, overlanding, canyoneering, hiking, mountaineering. You know, I love all that stuff, and I try and do it as much as I can. So when I'm in the studio, of course, you know, a little bit of that vibe I want to put in my music that makes you feel like you are out there. So the song you're about to hear and that we're going to be using for these five mistakes I made in it um, is going to resemble a little bit of that. It still has the whole dance vibe to it but definitely you know i was inspired by a lot of cool techno artists out there like chiasmos uh ben bomer i think that's his name and then there's another one called christopher loafer or something of those sorts um so keep that in mind as we go into these mixing mistakes but again i feel like anybody in any genre would be able to learn from the mistakes i made so that again makes your life a little easier because some of these mistakes took hours to just figure out and to find a solution for as always, guys, if you want to support my YouTube channel, you can head over to evilsounds.com. I do use a lot of the sounds that I have in those sound banks for this music, especially the selective ones. So if you're looking to make similar stuff, definitely check that one out. But I am going to be having a Black Friday sale, uh, I believe, in two days. So make sure to be on the lookout for that as well. And let's get started with these mistakes and the solutions to them. The first mistake that I made guys was that the kick I had, I grew too attached to the first one I picked that eventually my ears got used to it and I thought, oh, this sounds kind of good. The good thing about me is that I always live stream myself working on these songs, so I did have a couple of people telling me it sounded muddy. Originally I thought, oh, well, it sounds muddy, that means there's too much mid lows, the piano must have too much, the arp or something, you know. So I started going into that stuff until eventually I figured out that the kick was the biggest issue there was. Now, the problem with the original kick that I had is just that it had a bit too much low end. And when you tend to have a bit too much low end in your track, no matter how hard you try to get it to sound clean, it's always going to sound like you're in a submarine. It kind of rhymed. Or it sounds like a cloudy day. Like you feel like, man, this could sound a lot cleaner and you just can't figure it out. A lot of times it could be that the kick or your low end is too much. So let me show you what I mean and how I fixed that problem. Now this one is a pretty simple one guys, so I'll show you what I mean. So here we're going to have the brand new kick, but I'll show you guys the low one first, which I personally still like to this day. They just have different vibes, but I feel like the top one just works a little better uh, as the song progresses. Now the issue with the bottom kick is that when you have the kick in the bass playing at this part in the song. Uh, you can kind of feel like it sounds a bit muddy at the same time it also sounds a bit like you know this kick if you hear by itself it sounds ugh, ugh, for some reason uh now if we switch it with the proper kick the one after you know i clean my ears out with a q-tip which sounds like this we still have that sort of kind of 808 vibe to the low end but now we also have the top end the transient that this one is missing now when we have it like so It makes a little bit more sense to have it that way. Now, probably the last thing I want to do is put a mono on it because for some reason I feel like there's some air that is still in stereo on it. But again, it sounds a lot cleaner. Now, if we move along to this part of the song where finally we have some of the drums coming in. the difference the bottom one doesn't sound as bad as it did over here 
But again, it still comes with that kind of vendetta. So one of the things I could have done is kept the kick and added drums here instead of starting off with just one clap instead of having both, vice versa. However, again, a lot of times if you find that's the issue, it's better to just switch the kick to one that sounds a little better. So as the song progresses, this one just makes a little bit more sense. The second mistake I made was a very newbie one, I feel like. But a lot of the songs I was referencing for this song had like these bass lines that had a lot of upper harmonics. Now, the key thing you have to keep in mind with reference tracks is the fact that you have to make sure you have similarities in terms of like if you're going to be using a very open bass, are there any upper melodics or arps that are going to fight with that bass? Now, some of the reference tracks I used, they didn't have upper melodics, but in this track, I actually did. And I had a lot of stuff going on. So I tried to go for a bass that sounded open and kind of boom, boom to it as well, but it just didn't work out. So essentially this mistake was the bass clogging up due to the upper frequencies. And this is a mistake I see a lot in progressive house and any sort of like melodic style music where you have a bass and for some reason you want that bass to sound dirty and, and full and, and strong. But the purpose of the bass in these kind of tracks is not to, again, sound dirty and, 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 and like deadly but to kind of give you the feel of it, to feel the track rather than to hear the wah, wah, uh, if you get my drift. So I'll show you what I mean in this example, but this is an easy fix and this is something I see a lot of people doing. Now the answer to this question is how far should I go down? How much should I cut? Is it all gonna be determined by the amount of leads you have on top and where those leads are gonna essentially reside, where the meat of those leads are. The second mistake I made in this track again is gonna be that low end. So. A lot of times you guys are going to have tracks where they're very melodic and you're going to have a lot of nice things on top. And it's easy for us to kind of go with a bass and just be like, well, this sounds fine. But the problem with that is, as you can hear, it kind of just messes with a lot of the upper information that we have already you know when you're mixing a song and you have a bass it's all about you know kind of like cat and mouse in a way where you're just defending yourself you're landscaping this so that nothing fights so the bass doesn't really need to have those mid lows those upper harmonics because we already have so much stuff going on we have essentially a piano that is covering this area here uh, we're going to have the bass. So the bass doesn't really need to cover that as that's what the piano's territory. They're both in mono, so it's better to kind of have it low. But I'll also show you something. In the climax of the song, which I'm still currently kind of working on to give it, give it more of an amp vibe, if I have the bass fully open like that, Um, you know, the bass here doesn't really need to be like, bum, 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 bum. It, it just, it should be something that should be felt, not again, be like so damn like all of the upper ones. So if I do this, if I kind of clean this up a bit, give it a bit more mid lows, like essentially the piano is kind of going down to 190. So I'll give this to 130, 150, let's say maybe a little less just to be safe on the side. Now, if we go back and play this part. gotta find a balance with it so for me it sounds a little better when we move this back you know we want that bass to sound nice and juicy but we don't want it to again take off its shirt and show the top end information <laughs> that's the best way to think of it because now if we go over here and it's more felt rather than heard it also makes a little bit more sense Mistake number three that I made, guys, is a little bit more towards my track and very specific to it. However, I feel like you can still learn from it in the sense that if you have something that sounds good in stereo and it sounds great, but then when you play it with the rest of your track, it's better if you put it mono, then you should probably put it mono. And this is a mistake I made and I just kept the track like that because I just love the way the piano sounded in it. I love that deep, dark piano being wide. The problem is, is that as hard as I tried to make it fit, as hard as I felt like, you know, there's something wrong with the mix, 
putting that piano in mono made a whole lot more sense than having it be stereo. So with this mistake, you might be having like a pad or a lead or something in your track where it sounds good stereo, but for your track, it makes more sense to have it in mono. Go with your gut feelings on that on this. Even if it sounds the same mono, you can still give it a bit of a stereo vibe with reverb and delay from a return track. So let me show you guys what I mean on this track where my piano was widened and I thought it sounded great. Putting it in mono just made it sound a little bit more compact, a little bit more like I was controlling the piano. The piano wasn't controlling me and you'll see what I mean with that. Now the piano guys is gonna be here and I get a lot of questions what it is, but I'll just kind of give it to you. It's the grand doer from contact, but the tone is set all the way down on it. No reverb coming from it. I decided to give it my own because I am gonna be monoing it as I said, but I'll show you guys what I mean. The piano and stereo doesn't really sound bad. It actually sounds a little better. So I'll play this out for you. kind of see once the kick and the bass come in there's something weird something wrong with the piano now i still want to keep the piano playing obviously i could say oh fuck it you know i'm gonna take it off now with me turning the piano from stereo to mono in a song i don't know it just sounds weird as the listener got used to hearing it in stereo so the fix for me on this was to just put it in mono give it a bit of reverb that makes it still have kind of like a stereo vibe which can be found here there's still a bit of width on that in mono, it sounds a little bit more like you have control of the piano. Now, for this tip, I actually had to go online and Google how to mix a piano or or is a piano, should a piano be in mono or not? Uh, eventually, I found some articles that said, you know, having the piano in mono helps because it the piano obviously takes up a lot of room when it's in stereo. Uh, however, if you put it in mono, you make so much more room for other elements that will eventually start to appear in the song, which obviously, as you guys heard, we do have a lot of stereo information in the track. So it makes more sense because now if we start to kind of bring this stuff in, over here now, The track just feels like you don't really have control of the piano that much. Now, if we go over here. here when it's not in mono it just the track sounds very loose and it also sounds like there's stuff overlapping i mean there's still a little bit of work more to do on the leveling of the mix here uh, maybe uh, the the elements are too loud like the the crashes and the atmosphere and whatnot but again the idea of it is the piano just needs to be in mono there's the fourth mistake I made is another newbie one, and this is just something that I have to deal with my whole life because I just love this too much, and that is reverb galore. For some reason, whenever I make these kind of tracks, I feel like they need to be drowned in reverb. I don't know why I'm in a fucking cave or something, I don't know. So for me, guys, I had reverb on the drums, I had reverb on the pianos, I have two pianos in this track, so they both had reverb, reverb on the arp, reverb on, on everything. The problem with that is the fact that obviously reverb is another sound source that is making its way into your track. When you put reverb on something, you're creating a new sound, which is that reverb, the reflections, the early, you know, the, the vibe that you get from it. The problem with that is that when you have so many fucking reverbs going off in each individual channel, obviously it starts to muddy the track. It doesn't sound clean and it just becomes a claustrophobic mess as you try to have a church reverb, a hall reverb, uh, a, a Satan reverb, a hell reverb, a heaven reverb, whatever the reverb is fucking called too much so what i had to do to fix this problem obviously was say you know what let's get rid of all the reverbs on everything the piano everything it doesn't matter let's make some return tracks and let's just slowly add it in what i found was that not everything in the track needs to have reverb because if you're gonna have like a piano have the reverb 
then that reverb can still work and you can still get the vibe from it without having to put so much damn reverb on your drums or your arp and vice versa Keep it in mind, if you want stuff in the front of the mix, you want it to sound crisp and clean like your favorite producers, maybe don't put reverb on it that much or maybe put a slight bit where you can barely tell it's there. Another pro tip I'll give you before we go to the example is that if you wear headphones, you'll hear the reverb a little bit more than if you use monitors. And that just has to deal with the fact that you're gonna have the left speaker fucking stuck in your left ear, the right speaker doom, on your right ear. So you can definitely kind of A and B between the monitors and the speakers to kind of get the right reverb setting or dry and wet value for your specific track now when it comes to reverb i can't really give a good example because i would have to ruin everything and just put a bunch of fucking reverb on stuff but i'll tell you guys this much you know a lot of the times people always tell me yo said i'm trying to get a sort of like this vibe to a certain track the biggest issue I find is that a lot of people just always seem, seem to put too much fucking reverb out of spite of feeling a little insecure on the mix they have. Like maybe it sounds too empty or whatnot. What you got to keep in mind is that that emptiness is totally fine. I mean, obviously, you know, if you have a bass kick and it all sounds pretty good in front, the emptiness is what creates that clean, dry vibe that you're kind of going for. So the moment that you put reverb on something, you kind of lose it. You know, if I put that reverb on, it might sound good. But the moment you have that on a drop or something, like if we just turn that on the... kind of hear the difference in space and that's what i don't like first off when you hear the song uh the, the reverb and piano sound like they're in a cave in a church while the drums sound like they're out in nature so when you have different reverbs going off in different environments here's another one if i have the and you have different sizes going off. You have like a church, a hall and whatnot. It just doesn't make sense. It confuses the listener. It doesn't give you a coherent sound, but instead it just sounds like a bunch of fucking different rooms in a song and it, it never sounds good. So I mean, it already sounds swamped. Like everything is in a different fucking environment instead of having one cohesive theme to it, a cohesive reverb. Uh, so I do have reverb on the piano already, which is very, it's a very short one. You can barely tell it's there. I already told you what reverb this piano has. You kind of want a very organic one for, uh, for that. And then the drums also have. So there's no need to go over the top with reverb guys remember if you want that clean sound that clean vibe where like someone can close their eyes and see where every sound is coming from in your song reverb will prevent that if you put too much of it the fifth mixing mistake i made on this guys is one that it's kind of like when your parents tell you not to do something and if you do it you're going to think of them in the future and then thank them well, this is one of those mixing mistakes that a mixing engineer would tell you and you just never listen and you did it anyways until you went like, oh, fuck, I've been doing it a little wrong. And that is leveling or mixing with a master on. Now, again, it's fine if you have a master on and you work on your song that way because you like to feel the energy of it. That's totally fine. Compose your track with a master on, feel the energy, feel the bass going up your toes into your head and through your tits. But at the end of the day, when you're going to go to do a final mix down of your track, make sure to turn that master uh, off and if you just like the loudness of it because it's just too damn quiet you can always put the volume up on your sound card to the max uh, without blowing your speakers of course if that's what you want uh, but the reason for this guys is again when you have a mastering chain on you're compressing everything together so if you have let's say the bass really loud and then your lead like right here the bass is gonna make the compressor push that bass down it's also gonna push down the lead okay so you're gonna kind of have a level like this and you might be like oh it sounds fine but now the lead's getting pushed more down uh, you might have other issues like leveling problems like where with the master on it might sound good but it just doesn't sound clean 
enough because again it's working too hard because maybe you have a little bit of an imbalance make sure to check that out i'll show you guys an example here of what i mean uh in my issue the bass was just too loud i had a mastering chain on that made it sound good but not clean but once i figured out how to level it properly uh without the mastering chain on it just sounded way way better now the reason I feel like leveling with a master on it's a little bit of a mistake is the fact that if we have a master on here That piano sounds a bit loud, but it doesn't sound that bad just because everything is kind of loud You're kind of killing dynamics uh, in a way already now if we get rid of the master and let dynamics flow Now you're gonna find that that piano is definitely fucking too loud at certain spots like it just pops out a bit too much okay now some people might debate well that's what compressors are for to control that in the master and whatnot but i find if you can fix it before that it, it always gives you a cleaner response so what i'm going to do is lower the piano a bit Around there seems to be good, so it kind of me meshes with everything. Now, if we put the master back, it's a little better, kind of gives you a similar response, but it just sounds a little cleaner. Now, we can also pull down on it. And that's the idea. If we get rid of the Ozo now. We want it to sound good with the master and without it. That's the goal. You can also debate that this piano might just be a bit too loud. And it might be that I just boosted it up for an example I showed you guys, but... But my deal with this again guys when you have a master on you know everything sounds loud everything sounds like compressed and up front but the key thing is before that you want to get those levels right so that the compressor isn't working that hard you can kind of have a bit of a coherency already and again get a cleaner uh outcome a cleaner result all right guys and those are going to be my five mixing mistakes that i made on this track hopefully again if you've done any of these now you have sort of a solution to that problem uh but make sure to check it out if any of these helped you awesome if you have any that you found were like whoa this is crazy aha moment and if you had a youtube channel you would make a video about it uh, make sure to leave it down in the comments i'd love to read them and as always guys if i don't see you if you don't watch any of my videos happy thanksgiving to those of you guys that live in the us of a uh, and happy holidays for the rest of you guys as well uh, I'll, I'll send you guys some turkeys if anything but anyways guys you guys take care as always you can support me at evilsounds.com and i'll catch you guys later take care